Um, thank you for inviting me to Paris. Uh, if I start to speak too quickly, uh, say something, uh, throw rocks, whatever. Um, I'm a little groggy because I got to spend last night at the police station. Your French police are wonderful. I highly recommend them. So. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> yes. I was not there for anything that I may or may not have done wrong. So, I'm here to talk about the OpenBSD web stack. So, who am I? I've, I've been a sysadmin for 20 plus years now. Uh, I helped found the Southeast Michigan BSD user group, which is this, this little tiny dot on the other side of the planet from here. Uh, I write books, uh, fiction and nonfiction, and my, my most recent tech book is uh, on RelayD and HTTPD from OpenBSD. So, let's talk about the web. The, the web is a sewer. It's awful. It's horrible. It is full of crap. The, the, the web is the worst thing to happen to the internet uh, in, in the whole history of the internet. Well, okay, we had Usenet. That was pretty bad. There was a lot of junk and crap on that. But, you know, uh, there's uh, j just all kinds of terrible things. And that the okay mailing list they're they're bad too uh but but really the, the the you know the in the good old days the internet was just so much better and cleaner and easier to you uh, well okay fine never mind <laughs> so let's talk about the software life cycle here uh, w there's a whole bunch of open source developers in here and y and you you, you, you've seen this many times. Once you've been around a few years, you realize that someone writes a simple tool to, do a, a, to solve a problem, and it's a great tool. And people love your tool, and they start to use it. And you get a patch. And the patch looks nice. It looks good. It adds something on. This is kind of cool. Um, and then other people send features, and then you get you know some hyper-caffeinated squirrel that has nothing better to do than add really awesome functionality to this thing you made, and it's wonderful, and then you get Apache. <laughs> so, and then someone comes along and says, hey, I'm going to write a simple tool to solve this problem, because the existing tools are just so damn huge. And someone sends them a patch. <laughs> so, <sighs> OpenBSD does things a little bit differently. Um, have you seen the, the, the blog post, Features Are Fault, by Tedu? If you have not, you, if you take nothing else from this, go read that article. It, it is written in clear and accessible language. I'm going to turn this so I can pace properly and still see my notes. Uh, it's written in clear and accessible language. There's, there's you know, no make files or uh, code or anything in it, but it explains what the problem is with software. The more you add to it, the more complexity you get, and the more ways there are for it to break. And OpenBSD open has one thing that they do really, really well, and that is say no. Um, no, you can't have that. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, no, this is what this tool does and no more. And you can pipe it through set and awk and write your own Perl script around it. That's fine. We don't care. But we're not adding that function. So... Uh, and most of us for web servers, we need simple web servers. 90% of the pages on the internet, not, not the popular sites, but just the raw pages, are pretty simple sites that do pretty simple things. They don't have complicated backends 
They're just providing a document or presenting the company face or, you know, uh, some, some idiot's website that, you know, they, they publish in an article and suddenly 50 million people come read it and their web server bill goes through the roof. It, it's really simple stuff. And that is, the, the simple stuff is where the OpenBSD uh, web stack really excels. It, it, it's composed of the HTTP web server. If I have a criticism of their project, it's that they called the web server HTTP. Go search for that on Google. Um, RelayD is a, a general purpose uh, proxy and redirector. Uh, they use CARP for IP layer redundancy. Uh, all of this plugs into PF and it's built on top of LibreSSL. Uh, the LibreSSL point here is important because if your system doesn't have LibreSSL, you have to either build your own packages uh, or run a different web server. But they, they use LibreSSL specific APIs because why would you use OpenSSL if you had a choice? So, it runs on OpenBSD, of course. Uh, TrueOS, HardenBSD are built with LibreBSD, LibreSSL. Uh, I've built custom packages on FreeBSD. Um, and the, the farther you vary from OpenBSD, the less luck you will have running it, I'm sure. Someone will port HTTPD to Linux and plug it into IP tables. <sighs> so, HTTPD, simple web server. The config syntax is reminiscent, uh, and there goes someone who doesn't use LibreSSL. Um, con the config syntax looks like Nginx, looks like pretty much every other OpenBSD server. Uh, it runs uh, privilege separation, ch rooted into var dub dub dub. You configure it in etsyhttpd.conf and dynamic content comes through fast CGI integration. And, and here's what a config looks like. Um, you, you set a macro. You define a server, all the servers are virtual servers. You can include a file, you can have web aliases. You listen on the macro on port 80 and set a root directory inside the ch root. Um, if you have used any OpenBSD software, this should look real familiar. You can also have per location rules in there. Here we've set, well we want the whole site automatically indexed. If you're in the files directory, there's no automatic index. You have to know where a file is to be able to grab it. And here we've set up some password authentication. Uh, and even put a little message that will appear in, in the uh, authentication box. So there is a default server that listens on all IPs of the host by default. Uh, if a client just does a netcat to port 80 and a get, they get the default server, which is in the htdocs directory. Uh, HTTPD makes heavy use of blocks and redirects. Uh, there is no rewrite. You, there is no like Perl style mod rewrite. This is a feature. Uh, There are, there are ways around it, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, but this, with blocks and redirects, you can do things like, here we're listening on port 80, but we transparently redirect to the, to the TLS version of the website. Uh, you can use globs, you know, standard shell globs. You, you have servers, you know, web servers 0 through 9 on your web farm. Well, they can all share a config, all share a root directory. Um, you can use wildcards, again, just like the shell. Here we have any host name under mallard.info, and we have an alias for just plain mallard.info comes here. 
You can do really complicated, annoying things like this. Uh, I don't know why you would want to, but it's an option. Uh, Perl regexes. Does anybody, how, how many of you feel you know Perl regexes? Okay, the fact, uh, I normally tell people that they're wrong when they raise their hand. However, the fact that every person raised their hand kind of hesitantly and, yeah, yeah you're right. You, um, from the, the OpenBSD perspective, as I understand it, one of the big problems with Perl regex is, it, is it, verifying the code is, is just ghastly. And most people only use a tiny subset. So, it, why add these features that nobody really exercises? And with code that is gigantic, nasty, and unavoidable. So, instead they grabbed Lua patterns, which have a lot of regex style functions. They're much smaller, much simpler. Um, they, they are not Lovecraftian. And they, they look a lot like globs. They look so much like globs that they've added this match keyword to say, no, this is a pattern. So, and I'm, I'm going to go a little quickly through this. I'm, I'm just trying to let you be aware of what's in it rather than teach you how to build this because we have a bunch to get through. Um, you know, classes of all digits, all printable characters, you know, all alphanumerics. Um, put classes and characters in brackets. You have all seen this before. You already know how to configure these. Um, anchoring to the front and back of a string, one or more, zero or more. So, you can use all of this to set server names and directory names and locations. So, uh, HTTPD uh, defaults to the traditional Apache log style. Does anybody here actually use traditional Apache logs? And a few of the OpenBSD people raised their hands in the back. Um, OpenBSD is written for the developers. They like Apache logs. That answers the question of why the hell did they decide on that format? So, it also supports combined logs, which most other people use, yep. and you just set that there. Set an access log, error log. These are all under the ch root. Uh, debugging is pretty straightforward. Test the configuration before you start it. Test an alternate config. If you're really having trouble, you can run the web server in the foreground with verbose debugging and watch as it answers replies. And th this is where you discover that you used a, an asterisk instead of a plus in your Lua pattern, and that's why people are getting the wrong server. Now, dynamic content. Ah, oh, PHP rules the web, I'm sorry. Uh, there are people staging the revolution, but right now they are the empire. Uh, OpenBSD uses slow, G, slow CGI to support the fast CGI interface. Uh, slow CGI is actually pretty fast, but uh, if you're running dynamic content and you get a 500 error, slow CGI is not running. Uh, that little chip will save you about three hours of screaming at your keyboard. Uh, and, and basically, you just you set a location. You say where the, the scripts are and tell it fast CGI. And, and it feeds it to a socket inside the CH root. Um, and talking about the CH root. The plus side is, you know, if your web server is broken into only stuff inside the CH root is accessible. The downside is, as a sysadmin, only stuff inside the CH root is, access is accessible. Uh, remember, you can't symlink out of a CH root. 
Uh, so you'll, if you're running WordPress or something, you will want to add stuff like resolve.conf, local time, these, these critical system files. Uh, you may need an Etsy hosts. And if you're running something more complicated, say you have an actual Perl CGI, you'll want to use LDD to find the shared libraries you need and get them in there. But let's look at uh, if you can if your web server can run WordPress, it can run anything. So let's run some WordPress. Pardon me, just a minute. So, uh, some important details here. If you go searching for the MySQL package on OpenBSD, you will become very frustrated. They're using MariahDB. Uh, since I discovered that, I'm now using MariahDB everywhere because Oracle. Uh, OpenBSD will let you install multiple versions of PHP simultaneously. I strongly recommend you pick one and stick with it. And go into rcconf. You don't need any special flags for uh, HTTPD, but you do want to start the P your chosen PHP FPM processor, which is fast CGI for PHP. You'll also need a database socket inside the CH root. And you'll need to tell my, uh, MariahDB to put the socket inside the CH root. Uh, OpenBSD also ships all kinds of modules, uh, but they go the configuration for their PH for the PHP module initiation scripts go in this sample directory. You'll want to uh, copy. Your, your INI files into the actual PHP configuration. Uh, and then start the, the PHP FPM module. So all you really need to run PHP is tell it an index.php is an index file and then specify in, instead of the default fast CGI socket Tell it, no, look at the, the PHP socket. And that's really it for configuring your, your dynamic web server. Uh, there's uh, no long config file. There's, there's nothing else. And the nice thing is I'm pretty confident, given the people developing it, that it's not going to get, you may get an extra line or two of configuration somewhere, sometime, but it's not going to be much. I'm sorry, I moved my head a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play Dalek a bit. Uh, TLS, how many of you run SSL? You, you do know that you know, TLS is the successor protocol and you should not be running SSL. So having said that, how many of you run SSL? Yeah, a bunch of hands still go up. I know, I'm sorry, we're stuck. Um, I, I'm, I'll remember, TLS, uh, Transport Layer Security, is a much better name because it only supports data in transit. It, it, TLS does not secure your web server. Uh, and really, despite all that happens with these certificate authorities and them sending, you know, you have to send your driver's license and a DNA print and all of these things to get, to prove your identity, all that these certificates do is verify who controls the DNS of that website. So, um, I'll sum this up as saying certificate authorities suck. Uh, they, they charge large sums of money to run shell scripts. Uh, 
And, and when I say that I suck, what I really mean is that I'm envious. So, let's encrypt. How many of you have used Let's Encrypt? I love BSD cons. I, I deeply love BSD cons. Okay. So, free SSL scripts for everyone, for every purpose, for anything. And, and Let's Encrypt works. There, there are two ways you can verify that you control a domain. Either through an entry on a web page or an entry in a DNS server. Uh, OpenBSD includes the, this Acme client for the automated certificate management environment. Uh, I can't hear that name without thinking of Wile E. Coyote, by the way. Uh, and OpenBSD has the best simple Acme client I have ever seen. I love it. Uh, and that the certs are good for 90 days. You can, manually auto, you can manually renew them. If you do it that way, you're an idiot. Uh, so, whoops. That slide shouldn't have been there. I'm sorry. Uh, I've given this talk two times, and each time I think I need to pull that slide out. Uh, okay, how Acme works. At the, at the first time you run the client, it creates a, an authentication key pair with Let's Encrypt. Uh, the client asks the Acme Certificate Authority what proof it will accept. Let's Encrypt accepts HTTP and DNS. Uh, client gets to pick between the options. Acme client only uses HTTP. Uh, Acme client creates this certificate signing request, sends it in. Act the uh, Let's Encrypt says, if you're really this, create a file on the server and sign it. Acme client creates that file. The CA checks the file, verifies the signature, issues a certificate. And uh, OpenBSD has a directory in the ch root just for Acme operations. And basically, you can just set this location on your website, tell it that the root directory is there. This root strip 2 looks a little odd, but all it means is strip these first two entries off the directory, off the URL before putting it in that root. And don't automatically index your Acme directory. And here is uh, an, an Etsy Acme client .conf for the domain. Uh, you set the domain name, set some alternate domain names, define where each of the files go, and then say sign it with Let's Encrypt. So with Acme client, Start off with Acme client minus A, create that key pair, get that cert. Uh, you need the, the minus D for the domain. The first time you, you run it, add a couple minus Vs to see what's really happening behind the scene. And then turn on TLS and HTTP.conf. Here I've put in an automatic redirect and here is the actual TLS website. We're listening on all addresses. We add TLS on port 443. We, we define the, the certificate with the full chain file. We have the, the path to the TLS key. You can also use HSTS, High Security Trans... I forget the acronym. Uh, Strict Transport Security, thank you. Which sounds really cool, but what it means is if, if you ever break your SSL, nobody can talk to your site, including Let's Encrypt. So be real confident in your setup and that, that you've renewed certs a few times before you do that. Um, not that I've ever locked my own web server renewal out or anything. Um, there's a, this fiendishly complicated process to check and renew your script. Your, your 
TLS certificates. And if you get a, a you know, you, you run Acme client and the domain name. So do you need to renew, yes or no? If uh, you get a certificate back, reload the web server. So how many of you have used OCSP before? OK, OCSP is a, a, if your website is small and you don't care how fast it is, OCSP is traditionally not been worth your time. Uh, it, every time you contact an, a TLS website, your web browser contacts the certificate authority to make sure that the cert is still valid, that it has not been revoked. So this slows down your website. OCSP uh, basically staples a, a, a recently generated certificate for your certificate that says this certificate has not been revoked in the last seven days. And it provides that to the client and it provides a bit of a speed up. And it doesn't tell the CA when someone is actually using the certificate. So it, here is a command, you know, OCSP check, set the file, set the key, plug it into httpd.com. It, it is so easy, it is suddenly worth doing for everyone. Uh, OCSP certs expire weekly. Use this complicated shell script. The worst part is the path to your key files. And Reload the web server if you have a new one. Okay, some things you can do, you shouldn't necessarily do these, but the internet is stupid, and sometimes you have to. You can uh, affect the TCP behavior of the web server in httpd.com. You can set a time to live on your, on your web server packets, so if you don't want this website accessible outside the company, even if the firewall team screws up again. You put a time to live of two on your website packets, and they can't leave the company. Uh, you can change TLS versions and ciphers. Don't do that. Uh, the, the, the ciphers and versions were chosen by people smarter than you. Um, if you have users with their own websites, put their web their home directories inside the CA tree. Okay. Uh, Relay D. Relay D is a, a arbitrary uh, traffic redirector. Uh, OpenBSD comes with PF. It can redirect traffic to hosts inside your firewall, and it includes a uh, load balancer that is, is basically fault oblivious. It sends traffic to hosts whether they are alive or not. And RelayD is basically, it just tests the host to see if they should receive traffic. And it adjusts the tables in, in the firewall appropriately. So RelayD can also act as a layer seven proxy. You can terminate a TCP connection at it uh, muck with the connection and create a new connection. Uh, always start with a PF firewall, a, a working firewall. You have to have packet forwarding, make sure that you know, the inside can't connect to the firewall. The usual lock down your host. So, RelayD has four components. Uh, Parent process, thank you, privilege separation. Uh, a host check engine that pokes at all of your servers and sees if they're still alive. A PF engine that talks to the firewall. And a relay engine that accepts and creates connection. Relay control manages all of this. Uh, relay D's, the, the part I usually use is the redirection, which is just pure TCP IP forwarding. Um, what time is it? Uh, 10 more minutes. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, 
you have tables, you can say, listen on the outside address and forward to uh, these servers on, forward to servers in this table, and this is how you check those hosts. You can set macros like every other OpenBSD program. Uh, you can use relay control to check uh, and show what redirections you have, what hosts are there, are they up and working, how many hosts are in a current table. Host checks, you can check by ICMP, ping. Uh, you can do TCP port tests. HTTP response code tests, are you getting a, uh, you know, a, a 200 error? Do you suddenly have 500 errors? Uh, you can check and see if TLS is working. You can do HTTP response codes over TLS. And you can check file, the, the integrity of files. Download a file from the web server. Uh, SHA-256, check it. If it matches, great. So you can also do things like, here we're forwarding to a, a mail server. And we send this string, nothing, and we expect 220, mail.michaelwlucas.com. Is my mail server working? You know, keep it in the pool or not. Here I have a script to check a DNS server, which we, we dig a domain name, we, we grep for the, the string that means that there is an authoritative answer here, and we return, you know, we invert the return code and send it back. If the DNS server is serving authoritative data, keep it in the pool. Relays, accept TCP connections, accept traffic, create new connections and forward it on and can filter the traffic. Uh, I'm, I am hurrying up a little here because we had camera trouble in the beginning. I'm, I'm sorry I did not anticipate that. Uh, here's a common thing you'll see where we relay traffic to SSH servers inside your firewall so your developers can get access. And we've defined a protocol here, down at the bottom, this protocol fix up, where we apply a change to the TCP stack. Say, when you create this connection, use TCP no delay. Uh, I encourage all of you at some time to run an SSH connection without TCP no delay. It is an education. Relays let you do really strange things things. Um, here we've defined this HTTP protocol called get only and it passes anything with an HTTP method of get and then it returns an error for anything else that says forbidden method. My developer swears to me that his application only uses HTTP gets. He's promised this. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> you can block requests, you know. Bill has also promised that he will never again use PHP MyAdmin. So we're blocking that particular URL and we're returning an error message for Bill. Um, I, in writing this book, I discovered there's this thing called WebSockets that basically re-implement TCP IP inside HTTP. Um, you can set something that says, if the client requests this through this upgrade method, say, no, no, we don't allow WebSockets. I also encourage you to try this because it is an education on just uh, what web developers will do to get around the fact that we have blocked everything but port 80. Um, and if you really, really hate your web developer, you can strip the user agent header. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving all of these not just to be mean, but just these are examples of things that you can do because again, the internet is stupid. So, Here's a config straight from the example 
that uh, you can put your SSL on the load balancer, take it off the web server. Uh, these days, uh, a TLS acceleration is not as desperate a need as it once was. However, if you find yourself stuck and the new hardware hasn't arrived and you've got to get some load off the web servers, it is nice to have the option to move that load elsewhere. Um, other things on relays, they do not do SNI yet. There is a rewrite in progress to work on that. Um, you can enable and disable client-side renegotiations, second session tickets, etc., and you can do high availability with CARP. So, uh, I have probably about 30 seconds. A little, little more, five minutes. So, um, we, we have a few minutes to talk Relay D. I, I'm going to take care of something now uh, as a U.S. citizen. Uh, trips like this are deductible on my taxes if they are for business. So, I need to say, uh, I'm a writer. Buy books, please. Thank you. So, um, and... And if this should, you know, show up in an IRS audit, you know, this, this session tape, uh, it's nothing against you personally, Mr. Auditor. I love you. You are a nice man. So, uh, are there any questions? Uh, we'll start in the front. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you think of the Beaches web stack with the uh, uh, library for... Uh first uh, CGI to write it on, uh, in C. It's from the same guy who made the, um, the ECMI client, if you heard of. I, I haven't worked with that. To the question. Uh, first thing to, to answer to that question, the author of both ECMI client and Beaches and Mandoc, Christoph Johnson, explicitly told me to greet everybody at this conference. He's stuck in LA and couldn't come. Second thing, I'm, I'm currently doing an, an audit on that library um, on behalf of Christop's um, company, uh, KPAM. And I must say, reading the code is, uh, is fun. It is, it is very small, it is very clean, it is idiomatically written. So if you have a choice, then writing a web application in pure NZC with the Beaches stack is probably superior to writing it in PHP, <laughs> but of course, but of course you have to uh, you have a nice um, and it's it's also quite true to the to the OpenBSD way. For example, myself, I have also written my main web application, man OpenBSD org, in NZC, without any scripting language. That works, and it gives quite nice and fast applications. But sorry for. No, I, thank you. You see, I, I love BSD cons. Other people answer the questions. <laughs> um, next question. Uh, yeah. uh, let's say I have two hosts, load balance with RealAD. Can I tell RealAD, hey, I'm working on that one host. I want to do a software upgrade. Please uh, keep that out of the rotation. Of and course don't, you And can. don't fiddle with it with the PF tables in the next few minutes. Of course you can. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, uh, you said that the HTTPD server is shrouded, but is shrouded, yeah. CH shrouded. CH shrouded, shrouded. oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but is the PHP FastEG server uh, CH shrouded as well? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Yes, you, you, you put the socket into the, the HTTPD CH root and the uh, PHP itself runs elsewhere. I, I, I trust them to have locked it down. Yeah, I'm, I shouldn't, but I do. Hi, uh, I'm pretty sure you use templates for your configuration for HTTP at least for a virtual host. Um, 
Do you have a specific template for HTTP only before using ECMA client to generate your first certificate? Or do you have some kind of automation? That, that's sort of a chicken and egg uh, the, problem I yes. hear. Yes. What, what I usually do to bootstrap TLS on the web server is I run a, a simple site that only has the virtual server and the ACME entry. And I generate the cert there. And then I switch everything over to TLS. And Let's Encrypt will go to the TLS site to check for the new ACME updates. Uh, you will probably kill me, but uh, what about HTTP2? <laughs> yes, yes. What what are the penalties for, you know, violent crimes in France? Just, uh, asking for a friend? Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, oh, call it a protest. Okay. Um, the web server is what it is. If it does not meet your needs, feel free to use a different one. Having said that, you know, there are people working on the, the, the OpenBSD folks watch what's happening. One of them will need HTTP2, and they will, oh, and just for the record for the camera, since the camera's pointing it up here, let me show that Peter Hessler has raised his hand. Oh, no, you raised your hand. You're, we, we know who's responsible. <laughs> So first off, uh, HTTP2 solves, solves the problem in the wrong way. The correct answer is don't load 700 JavaScript things in, in your web app. Two, the other answer is use a different web server. Nah, don't care. Uh, can I add another uh, web header uh, to HTTPD like HP, HPKP? Um. RelayD will let you add all kinds of web headers. I do not recall off the top of my head if HTTPD will let you add a header. No, thank you. And Just curious, do you use this for your own websites? I use this for some of my websites. I will be switching the rest over. Uh, I'm running my, my database stuff goes on a ZFS-backed web server. However, I'm planning to do a book on FreeBSD packaging next year. So I'll be building LibreSSL packages and uh, going that way. OK, thank you. I have a question uh, concerning Acme client in, in, in an enterprise environment, uh, so f only for internal use. Uh, how, how do you get uh, the certificate uh, there? Well, there's a, a, how do you get a certificate in private enterprise? The, if it's a private site, what I would do is you know, there is a, Back in the day, we called it Split Horizon DNS, where you had a, a public DNS entry for something and then a private DNS entry with a different IP. That, and depending on where you were, you got different answers. So, and you can have multiple names on one Acme client cert. So I would put something that faces the public that has a, just a whole slew of names on it. Uh, renew the cert out there and use some whatever scripting mojo you have to pull that cert inside the enterprise. There's also, Dan Langell is working on something called Anvil, which is this, um, if you have complicated Let's Encrypt needs, it may solve those problems, if it, but solve that problem as simply as you can. Anyone else? Um, you mentioned the uh, uh, or, or 
I think it was Ingo who mentioned the uh, uh, C applications that you want to run on your uh, dynamic website. Yes. Uh, do you have any suggestions for running uh, simple, small uh, Python or Lua scripts? It, it's perfectly. It it should be perfectly doable. Uh, get a. You're, you're going to need something to run fast CGI protocol. You point uh, the HTTPD fast CGI socket uh, configuration at the socket for your fast CGI interpreter, and it should just work. I have not run uh, Python or Lua websites. So I, I'm, I'm sure this is a wonderful group of people to ask during the break, though. I uh, learned that the fast CGI argument in HTTPD takes a port number as an argument. So instead of a socket, you do a colon. And that's oh. one way to do um, Python applications. Okay. I did not know that. Anyone else? Thank you all.